This is the Temple of Geek Cosplay Connection. Your inside connection to the world of cosplay. Welcome to another episode of Cosplay Connection. I am your host, Daniel, and today I have a special guest who not only cosplays as Doctor Who companions, but is also the comedian and house team member of Nerdist Improv School. I'd like to introduce Lauren Bancroft. Hello. Lauren, thank you so much for taking the time to speak with me today. Let's start off by asking you to tell us a little bit about yourself. Uh, sure. So uh, my name's Lauren. I'm from New Hampshire, and I'm currently living in Los Angeles. Uh, you mentioned that I, I'm involved in the Nerdist Improv School. I do sketch. I do stand-up a little bit of improv uh, and I do a lot of cosplay that's awesome yeah so you're a fan of Doctor Who what is yes. it about the show that makes you want to cosplay the, with, as the characters it's a great question um, so I guess it's not a question of really the characters but like the show itself and I think it's because like there are certain things that I love in my programming and one of them is like a brilliant broken beautiful man which obviously doctor who has um and also i love the dynamic of him having a like a strong-willed smart sassy confident uh companion Mm -hmm. so that dynamic is just wonderful and i will follow it till the ends of the earth um so that's pretty great um but also like what the show is about you know it's about adventure and every episode can be in a different time in earth's history on a different planet in some made-up universe it's it's really different every episode, and I really love that. Um, but it's also about relationships and how you know relationships end, but that doesn't stop the doctor from you know forming a new bond and you know loving in his, in his way, loving that person, and then having to say goodbye. Um, but that doesn't stop him from having those relationships. Uh, so I really that all really resonates with me. So I love Doctor Who. What would you say your favorite episode is? Um, it's probably the very first episode I ever saw, which is Girl in the Fireplace, uh, from season two of Reboot to 10th Doctor and Rose, um, and Mickey was in that one. Uh, it's great. I actually saw it years before I ever got into Doctor Who, mm-hmm. but it just stood out in my mind as my favorite episode. And it really plays with time, uh, which is probably, it, it's a really great example of, uh, of the time factor of Doctor Who. The, the episode that always bothered me of Doctor Who is the, uh, I think it was called The Last Person on Earth or whatever, where they're watching Earth getting ready to be destroyed, and they had this giant piece of skin stretched out on... <laughs> on Sandra. I was the like, tra- the what? The trampoline, yes. <laughs> like, what is this? Yeah, she was the last human. How many costumes have you created uh, for cosplay over the years? Let's see. Uh, well, I have 11 Claras. I have Bill, Hang on. Bill, um, um, I don't know, probably twenty. Twenty. Probably 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 about twenty. Um, maybe maybe more for like if you count like Halloween costumes that I then after Halloween just count as cosplay I have. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean a, a lot of it is like just like what I can find at a thrift store. Um, yeah, that's pretty much, that's a lot of, a lot of the reason I decide on like who I'm going to cosplay and when, Mm -hmm. obviously Clara is a character that I really relate to and I really adore. So I specifically seek out her cosplay, but like I went to Goodwill and in 10 minutes I found a Kimmy Schmidt cosplay. So I'm like, oh, I guess I'm cosplaying Kimmy Schmidt now. You're like, I can knock this out real fast. Yeah. Like in 10 minutes I found like the shirt, the sweater, the undershirt and the pants and the shoes for like 20 bucks. All right. (laughs) I can do a Kimmy cosplay, sure. If, if you had to choose, who is your favorite character to cosplay as? I think you already answered that question. It's Clara. <laughs> yeah. How do, you, how do you choose what outfit you're going to make for your cosplay? Is it just basically what you find in thrift stores? or? Uh, it's a, well, it's a little bit of that, but it's also, um, like, Clara specifically, her style is, it, like, really spoke to me. Mm-hmm. So if I see an outfit that I really like, then I, um, I, I try to find, sometimes I try to find the screen accurate, uh, items, but that's not always possible because they're, they sell out really quickly mm-hmm. or they're um, incredibly expensive depending on when you try to buy them. Um, so, uh, but it, like you finding alts is really just good enough um, for me at least, but her style really has influenced my own personal style. So if I do buy anything for Clara cosplay, I wear it every day. It's, it's something you get to wear outside of cosplay. Yeah. 
I do. I, I wear it to work. I wear it out on the weekends. Like I'm, I'm not at all shy about. It. Like I think every day there's a little bit of cosplay in my outfit. So. Do you get to attend a lot of conventions? Um, well, living in Los Angeles, there are definitely a ton. Um, some of them, I yeah, you know, some of them I definitely go to. Some it's you know it's like, do I have money for the ticket this weekend? Do I have time? Do I have any other conflicts? Um, I try to go to a lot, but um, I haven't been to one in a couple months, and I miss it. But I have Gallifrey One coming up next month. That's true. So, that's that's the Doctor Who convention, correct? That's the Doctor Who convention. So I'm, I'm really excited about that. It, how many do you try to attend in a year? Boy, um, I would say there's probably like six big ones, like mm-hmm. six cons that I know are going to be like really good and uh, going to have a lot of people that I I know and love there. Mm-hmm. So uh, probably six. There are a few smaller ones, and especially in LA, there are a lot of like startup, like first year cons that have been trying to get off the ground. Um, so it can be fun to go to those, but. It can also be a little like, oh, well, they don't really know what they're doing just yet. So maybe I'll check back in a couple of years. Do you have any interesting convention stories that you'd be willing to share? Um, yeah. Uh, I went to – well, I think my my coolest story that I think I have is – I'm probably going to be talking about my hoodles a little later, but it's related to the hoodles. So let's uh, dive right in. Um, yeah. So, okay. So I'm just going to go ahead and explain. Um, I do little Doctor Who doodles. I call them Doctor Hoodles. Um, there are uh, Doctors and Companions and a few other characters. Uh, and uh, I submitted my 12th Doctor and my Clara to the BBC uh, in 2014, and they picked it to feature it on the at, at the BBC booth at San Diego Comic-Con. That's cool. Uh, yeah, it, it was so cool. And it was a pretty last-minute thing, and um, a, friend, a friend of mine had an extra ticket. So I got to go to San Diego Comic-Con for the, my very first time ever. And I got to see my fan art up on the big BBC America Jumbotron. That's awesome. It was really such a cool experience. So that's probably my coolest story is when I got to see that. Well, you just mentioned Hoodles. How did you come up with the idea for your sketches? Well, I uh, I was watching Doctor Who for the first time. And I was going through. I had my iPad out. And I just started doodling the 11th Doctor. And I'm like, oh, I kind of like this. And I'm like, oh, maybe I'll try 10. And then I did 10. And I'm like, this is a lot of fun. And I just kept going. Uh, and then next thing you know, I have, you know, I have a set of 17 different, you know, different hoodles that I have. Now, um, now they're like, they're buttons and stuff that you make too, correct? Yeah, they're buttons. And uh, I also have postcards of, uh, of the doctors and the Dalek. Do you have any that you can show us or do you have any? It's funny you should ask. Sitting on the table. As <laughs> I do. Awesome. Yeah. Let's see. See, we got a doctor's up top, and then the companion, and then we got a little, we got a little Strax in there. Where is he? Oh, right. Now you you yeah. you do sell these, right? Yeah, I sell them. Um, they're uh, Hoodles by Lauren on Etsy. So, and what are they? Pretty, it's pretty nice. I get to go to like there are occasionally like craft fairs out mm-hmm. here in Los Angeles. Um, so vendors can sign up and, and sell this specific type of thing. So it's pretty cool. You just got to find them and buy a table and then share your art with people. So it's pretty neat. Well, besides cosplay, your true passion is comedy. At what point in your life did you decide that you wanted to have a life, uh, live the life of being a comedian? Jeez. Well, um... <laughs> Since I was a kid, I've always I've always kind of been the funny one. I really enjoyed making people laugh. It's probably like how I got attention uh, mm-hmm. as a kid. Um, and people would ask me, like in my family, they'd say, "Hey, what do you want to be when you grow up?" And I would always say, "I want to be on Saturday Night Live." Like that was just my answer. But it wasn't until I was probably 21 that I realized that I had actually done. Like I, it was always like a dream. It wasn't a goal. But when I was about 21, I'm like, "Oh, well, I could actually like." try to do something with that um so i started doing stand-up and then i did that for a couple years and then i moved out to los angeles and started studying improv at the nerdist improv school and started doing sketch and uh here i am how often do you get to perform uh that's a good question um probably like four four times a month probably um i could get out more but it's you know sometimes it's about because I live, I live in L.A., but I work 
um, down in Torrance, so I have a bit of a commute. So it can be tough to, you know, to get out to an open mic or to, um, you know, to go to an improv jam if I've had like a long day at work. So I need to get better about motivating myself. But with the Burbs, my Nerdist uh, House Sketch team, um, we have uh, a handful of shows a month, and they're a pretty great little team. So I'm glad to be a part of them. Where do you get to perform? Is it any place like any fancy venues or anything like that? Um, let's see. Uh, with the Burbs uh, here in LA, I have uh, we perform. We have a monthly showcase at the Nerdist Improv School mm-hmm. uh, on Sunset in Hollywood. That's pretty cool, getting to perform in Hollywood. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, we recently had a, a showcase at the Comedy Central stage, also in Hollywood, so that was kind of a neat uh, a neat special show. Um, but yeah, we get, we've submitted to festivals, and we're just going to keep submitting to festivals because you know, a chance to travel to do comedy would be amazing. Mm-hmm. Um, so probably, yeah, probably those two is where I will definitely notice where I perform most often. How does it feel to actually be up on stage and make people laugh, make people laugh at something that you do? Uh, it's really satisfying. <laughs> it's really great. But it's also nerve-wracking because I get, it's like, you you know, you put a lot of time into developing this idea and it's like, okay, great, now how am I going to word it? Now how am I going to deliver it? And then and you're nervous a little, like a little tiny bit nervous before each time you say it, even if you've gotten laughs before. So it's like, all right, I'm about to say it. I'm about to say the thing. Are they going to be with me? Are they going to think it's funny? Okay. All right, I said the thing. All right, they're not laughing. Oh, wait, now they're laughing. Okay, good. They got the joke. It's okay. Great. <laughs> Moving on. That's awesome. Yeah. I think one of my – I'm, I'm going to try to quote someone. I'm probably going to get the quote wrong. But I think it was Steve Martin who said that stand-up comedy is when your mind is in the future and your mouth is in the present. Mm-hmm. And I really love that because that's exactly true. You know, it's that's absolutely what it is. Because like your your mind is thinking, always thinking of what's the next joke after this one, and your mouth is like, "Don't mess up the joke you're doing now, though." <laughs> that's pretty great. And it's amazing to get to do sketch to- sketch comedy live with a team, because you know you spend weeks writing and rewriting, and then to actually perform it in front of a crowd and to hear that laugh, it's like, "Oh man, this sketch is funny." Oh, that feels nice. Now, you're the house, te- you're a house team member for the Nerdist Improv School. What has that experience been like for you? Oh, it's been awesome. It's been so great. Um, yeah, about six months ago, they had a submission, so people who completed the sketch program at Nerdist were able to submit a small packet and an audition tape, um, and then they watch it. If they think you're a good fit, they either put you on a new team or they put you on an existing team. I was added to the Burbs. Uh, they were an existing team. They, I think they were founded in December of 2015, so they've been around for a little bit, uh, and they welcomed me with open arms. I've never felt like I was the new girl. Um, I was as soon as I was added, I was a burb, which is awesome. Um, it's great. We're actually getting all getting brunch later today, which I'm very excited about. That's cool. Yeah. So they're a, they're a good little group of friends and teammates. So. Well, do you have any other passions besides Doctor Who and comedy? Um, I want to say yes. I really, I really like eating alone in my car. That's really fun. Lunch, lunch with Lauren. Car lunch with Lauren. <laughs> yes. Um, which is, Car Lunch with Lauren is a very silly web series that I do, um, where I just eat alone in my car. Yeah, I, I, I like the episode when your mom was on there. It's just kind of funny. <laughs> yeah. What's great about that is that she hadn't seen it. Like, she saw that I had been posting them, but she hadn't cared enough to watch them. So I'm like, Mom, do you want to be a guest on Car Lunch with Lauren? She's like, yeah, sure. So I hit record, and she's like, so what do we do? Just I'm like, eat lunch? We literally just eat. That's it. We eat on camera. She's like, oh, okay. And then she ate her in and out burger. It was fine. But she was very confused for a bit. That's awesome. Yeah, so that was great. Um, I do. I do also enjoy podcasting. Um, I'm working on getting my own podcast together. Okay. Uh, but I really love guesting on other people's podcasts. Now, do you just like guest on like Doctor Who podcast, or is it just uh, like a wide mostly, range? Mostly Doctor Who podcasts, um, since that's really what people associate me with, which I'm totally good with. <laughs> totally fine. Don't mind that at all. Well, now it's time for random questions. Uh, okay. 
Basically, this is the part of the show where I'm just going to click a random question generator and you answer the questions. Hopefully, there's nothing weird that generates here. All right, let's do it. <laughs> so I'm going to go ahead and random, uh, select a question here. Mm-hmm. Let's see. First question that came up is, if there's an extra hour every day, what would you do with it? Oh, there's an extra hour. I would... Um... Do, 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 do. What would I do? <laughs> What would I do? I would probably uh, watch another three episodes of 30 Rock. Because you can knock that out in an hour? Yeah, because they're really quick and they're hilarious. And I love them. Uh, if you couldn't tell, I'm, I'm working through rewatching 30 Rock, Rock at this moment. So, um, yeah. That, that's boom. Final answer. That's what I'm <laughs> final answer. What is the first thing you notice when meeting someone new? Uh, how good their handshake is. Because I all I'm really I'm not a big hugger, but I'm big into handshake. Has to be a nice, strong, firm handshake. Yeah, but if it's too firm, then like, okay, settle down. Buddy. But if it's, <laughs> and if it's too weak, it's like, oh god, can you freaking have a spine? Come on, step up. If you could have one superpower, what would it be? Um, even though I feel like this superpower without another one might be a bit of a waste, but I, I have always wanted to fly. Like, I have a lot of flying dreams. I think that's the standard yeah. answer. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty uh, pretty standard. But when you think about it, like, being able to fly, like, you couldn't, if you weren't super strong, you couldn't, like, save a plane, mm-hmm. you know? So really, flight on its own would just be, like, a slightly more efficient way to travel. <laughs> well, what are some things that you shouldn't say at a funeral? Uh, who are we here for? <laughs> Would you rather? Yeah, that <laughs> That's you fine. You want answer? Would you rather be rich and ugly, or poor and good looking? Um. And I think that will be I our final that's question. An age-old question, frankly. Um. Uh, rich and ugly. <laughs> rich, rich and ugly. Just because. And then if I'm, maybe I could. If I'm rich, I could also maybe be delusional and think I'm more attractive than I am. <laughs> we're gonna end it there we're, uh, the questions get kind of weird <laughs> thank you for being a good sport and answering some of those questions yeah, no problem is there anything else that you think we should know about you um is there something deep dark secret that we need to know <laughs> I don't know I'll be sharing on this interview <laughs> yeah um I don't I don't think so um oh that that rose cardboard cutout uh, I bought that with the last thirty-five dollars I had in my checking account when I ran out of my savings after I moved to LA. Because you had to have it. Yes, I did. I did have to have it. I went into the store called Whimsic Alley in LA. It's amazing. Uh, check it out. It's like a Tumblr came to life. That's awesome. It had a store, so it's great. I was walking around and I saw a cutout. I'm like, "How much is this? Thirty-five. I have forty dollars in my checking account. I'm gonna buy it." And I did, and it's probably one of the top top three things that I own is my Rose Tyler. Now, do these things move around your house? Um, much to my roommate's dismay, yes, they do. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah. she uh, She's good enough to let me keep Rose up here, but um, because I'm a good roommate, I try to keep Clara down in my room now. <laughs> she's the newest addition. So. Pretty soon you're going to have other companions. Is that your goal, is to have a line of companions? Because it was just Rose for about two years. She was holding down the port by herself. Uh, and then for Christmas, I'm like, I'm going to treat myself to a Clara. <laughs> and I did. So I don't know. It's not really a goal. It's just when it feels right. Well, how would our followers learn more about you? Ah, okay. Uh, LaurenBancroft.com. That's where I usually post when I have shows coming up. Mm-hmm. Um, on Twitter and Instagram, I'm at Bancroft. That's B A N C R O F F E D. And Instagram is my favorite, so follow me there. And you have, do you have also have a YouTube channel? I do. Uh, yeah, I think it's just just Google Lauren Bancroft. Lauren Bancroft. <laughs> yeah, you know, you'll, you'll probably find me. All right. Well, that's going to do it for this episode of Cosplay Connection. Thank you so much, Lauren, for joining me on this episode. To all of you watching out there, remember to visit templategeek.com for future episodes of this show and other content. And as always, thanks for watching.